Hey guys, I said I would uh, post this later today and I just got the printer running so I'm while, while I'm watching it uh, print the first few layers I'm going to go ahead and do this little quick tutorial. I've been searching for, since I started working with Rhino, I've been searching for a way to do this um, to make this kind of uh, signet or dome ring. Uh, the general way that we do it now um, that most of the builders and the plugins do it is to create these profile curves and use a network surface. Just go around and grab each of these and our top shape that we want it to match to and go ahead and build this network surface. And this is a pretty quick workflow to do to build a, a signet. Um, but the problem with it is down here you don't have a lot of control over the shape of your uh, finger rail. Um, as you can see now, it's the bottom is thicker than over here on the side. You can um, come in here and grab this curve and do some point editing to try and get it to uh, match up. But overall, it's just a pain in the butt. On top of that, you have all of your UVs coming to a point here, and Rhino does not like that. Um, Rhino does not like for all the UVs to come to a point and that can give you some problems later down the road um, <clears throat> Normally you would just cut it off at 45s and try and make a new bottom shank and You're stuck trying to match this profile um, This finger rail to the other side with some type of continuity It's ugly. It's not elegant um, So I found a new way to do it and Chris also reminded me on the forum today that uh, dump this to that layer that T splines or yeah T splines if you um, create a skeleton curve you can use T splines to uh, create your skin and what we really want to do is make a five sided surface here um, we want to side there one side going up the side of the band uh, matching the top curve this side and then the finger rail we want that five-sided surface it's very difficult to do without vsr shape modeling or something like that t splines will actually create that patch with continuity um, so it's very useful for that but i'm very excited about this uh, new way i found to do it that um willem dirks uh, showed me on um, the rhino forum um, like I said, I've posted this uh, a couple of times before. This time I got lucky enough to, that uh, I found somebody to show me. So let's get started with his way of doing things. Let's do a curve to view and get our finger rails out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this because it's going to be very point heavy. Uh, 310, uh, degree 3, 10 points is a good number of control points for a perfect circle. Uh, even if it's not planar, even if it's been out in space. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that and mirror it around. And that way I have a set of matching finger rails that is going to be the, uh, the actual rails for my sweep two that I'm going to do in a second. The next thing I need to do is pop in my uh, profile uh, curves for my sweep two. I've got all these points out here. They're all locked. Um, I always start off a model with my modeling aids and I have a point here at point zero. My hands are on my mouse and my Space Pilot Pro, um, so I don't like jumping to the keyboard to hit zero, um, or for you Matrix guys, your F keys. I, I just like to be able to click on it, click on point zero, um, and I actually have a button programmed on my Space Mouse for point zero, but. Um, so let's go ahead and do our profile curves. What I wanna do is come over here to uh, arc and right click on the second button which is will give me a start point which would be this quad click on that point and click on my other quad uh, do the same thing on the other side quad and then do the bottom here Okay, now those are my side profiles. Um, I would tweak these a little bit more to get them more exactly where I wanted them to be uh, shape-wise, but just for running through, this is good. 
for my top profile, I want it to come as close to this top surface as possible. This is the one that I'm going to have this surface match up to. This is the top of my signet ring. Uh, in my case, I'm going to put a halo of stones um, between these two curves. So to get it as close as possible, I'm going to use interpolate curve and go from point to quad to quad to point. And now these are intersecting. They don't have to be intersecting, they just have to be close. So I'm ready to do my uh, sweep two, but first I need to rebuild these curves so that they're all the same uh, curvature and number of control points. That will not let Rhino try and guess and create a potentially um, heavy surface with too many ISO curves. If they all match, Rhino is not going to build anything on its own. So interpolate curve was a degree five curve. Arcs are degree two. Um, we're going to just say three, eight and see what our maximum deviation here is. 0.2 and it's looking like this is the one that's deviating the most. Um, the other two, the other three look pretty spot on. So I'm going to tell that okay and go ahead and do my sweep two and grab one rail, the other rail, and then just go around here. Um, click on the bottom first so my seam's down there. I, I hate it when my seam's up here at the top and make that a closed sweep. And as you can see, you've got a very lightweight surface. There's not a lot of um, ISO curves. Um, <clears throat> looking at this top curve that we're going to match up to, we want it to be close. And it's a little bit a ways away here, uh, but it's spot on on the side. So let's jump to the front view. And I can see it a little bit better there. I'm going to use the top profile curve, turn the points on, and move it down. And because I always have history on, it's going to update the sweep two and get that a little closer. This is the top of that surface and that's a little bit closer now. Let's look on the side and we can see that it's close. I can move these out a little bit if I wanted to. Just a hair. And that's looking pretty good. We're, we're in the ballpark. Now it, it's not with intolerance so we can't use this curve to trim off the top. Uh, but what we can do is a blend. So I'm going to come here into my front view and Rhino Gold has this little uh, symmetric curve that'll make this job a little handier. And we're going to click there and use this curve to trim with uh, apparent intersections and lop off the top of that. And we can go ahead and delete that cut curve. Now for, we're going to blend this surface up to the top. We need a surface to blend to. Now an easy way to do this um, for most signet rings, because you don't need any type of continuity other than positional once you get to your top, is just to close off the top. In our case, in my case, because this is going to be a halo of stones, I'm going to loft those two around. And then now we can run blend surface directly between here and here and line these guys up and do that. If you needed more continuity than just positional, what you can do, delete that, is create some curves here that will blend, um, create some curves that you can make this surface with a slight bend in it so that when this comes up to meet with a blend surface, it'll be blended in a little bit better than what we've got here. So I'm gonna go the long route just to show you. Um, come here to my front view and we're gonna grab this and do a trim on that top. And that'll give me a, a curve to start working with. I also need a curve over here on the side. So I'm gonna extract an ISO curve off of this surface right here at the quad and go ahead and hide this for now. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line from this quad to that quad and from this quad to that one. And then I'm going to blend this curve over to that curve. And to do that, I'm going to call blend curve. 
and this is the curve I want to have come up and meet here. So for two, I just need positional. Um, so right now, I would be getting the effect if I just lofted these two and this would be a flat surface. And then we would have, um, when this surface down here came up to meet it, it would be positional all the way around. I want to give it a little bit more gentler of a turn than that. So I'm going to change this over to curvature continuity. Um, did I get the right side? No, I did not. Curvature continuity. And I'm going to drag this down. And we can drag this down just a little bit. Okay. So now I have a slight bevel here. Um, for what I'm doing, I don't need to do this. This is more if you were trying to match another surface up at the top. Tell that okay. Do it over here on this side. We want to blend this curve. Actually, let me extend this curve. Oops. No boundary object. Type arc. Two point to get it to there. And then call blend curve on this. Okay, so for one, we want curvature. For two, we want positional. And I can bring this down about the same as it was on the side. All right, so now this curve right here is very close, very similar to the curve we have over here. So I want to explode both of those and take this curve and that one and mirror it around. Where am I going here? There we are. Okay. And then just do a sweep two. Grab our two rails. And close that off. Okay, now we have a little lip here. And that little lip, when we go to do our blend surface, is going to make it uh, G2 continuous from the bottom all the way to the top. So I'm going to grab all my curves, and normally I would organize them onto layers and save them for future use, but I'm just going to hide them for now um, so I can keep this going. And then I'm going to call Blend Surf, and I'm wanting to blend this edge to that edge. Uh, line this up on a quad point. Now we really have two different kinds of blends here. We have these side blends and we have these side blends. If I just use one profile shape for this, um, it's going to look good on whichever side that I adjust it for. So what I want to do is add shapes to this and just have them for each of the quads. And that happened to be an endpoint and a quad. It's a quad, quad, quad. And showing up as a midpoint. That's fine. Okay. So for this, I want curvature continuity on both sides of this shape. So I can jump to my front view and start working on um, these sides. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bring this in. And it looks a little flat here. So I'm going to pop, puff that out a little bit. And I can use my grid lines as reference points for adjusting the other side. I actually want to bring this out a little bit as well. Um, so it just has a nice smooth curvature to it. Come over here to the other side. Bring that up to there. Let's see, bring this guy up. And I'm just looking at the other side and using my grid lines to kind of line these up to be the same. They just need to be close. And it's looking good except for up here at the top. And this has got a hook down. Okay, so I messed up on this curve somehow. I messed up on this curve that has a hitch here. I would go back and fix this. 
um, extend this ISO curve up. I mirrored it around and I know what I did when I mirrored it around. Let me show my curves again. This one, let me just go back and un undo that mirror. I bet when I mirrored it around, I got them mixed up. I got this one over here and uh, that one over there. That is probably what happened. So I'll run back through this again. Close sweep. Select all my curves and hide them. And then we'll run Blend Surf again. And that's not where I wanted that seam. Move that over to the quad. Okay, now I'll go back and add my shapes. jump back into my ISO viewport and do this adjustment again. I want to bring this in and bring this up. Okay, that has a good shape to it. And I'm going to be G2 continuous. I uh, use my grid lines as reference points. Zoom in here, out there. And I did not mean to make that click. All right, and those look like nice even shapes. I'm going to try and remember the shape of this the best I can. So when I switch to the right side, I can get this about the same thing. And this is looking good already. Um, I could bring this up a little bit, but that's looking good by itself. Uh, make that same change over here. All right, tell it okay. And now we can take a look at this and see if there's any weird bulging or any flat spots just visually real quick um, and after we zoom around uh, we can call zebra and grab all these guys and look for continuity I would have to adjust this mesh down because uh, that's a very tight turn but it would it, it is g2 continuous and if this shape was a little bit taller and not such a, an extreme turn right there, you would see it even more. But the rest of the ring where this surface transition happens right here is looking good. Um, and especially the bottom of the shank, it's nice, it's fluid, it's a single surface. I'm going to go ahead and kill that. So there you go. A nice easy way of making a dome or a signet ring um, that you can do in a couple of minutes. Hope this helps. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I might just show you how easy this is to do if I didn't want any type of continuity at the top. Uh, loft these. That gives me my surface to blend to. Blend surface, grab this one and that one, go back through, and this time I just want positional continuity. And go back through, add your shapes. So it's add your four shapes, but it's even looking good just by itself. Um, I just needed positional continuity. If you did a zebra on it, it wouldn't look as good, I'm betting. 
and it doesn't look as good right here but it is continuous there's just it it just has a different shape on this side than it does over here because I didn't take the time to uh, add a shape there during blend surface but most times when you're doing a signet ring you just want a flat top anyway you don't need any type of continuity going to going across uh, to the next top set of surfaces so it's even quicker if you don't take the time to make those um, curves uh, make that side transition with blend curve Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys on the forum. Bye.